So I've been browsing through the iOS developer library and I ran into what's known as a tab bar controller. And I've seen this before on iOS devices. It allows you to add that little menu on the bottom where you can click on it and it takes you to a different view or different screen within the application. So I've seen that before. And if you're familiar with iOS development, I'm pretty sure, not iOS development, but iOS in general, I'm pretty sure you ran into this before. Uh, so this is known as a tab bar controller and that is known as a tab bar. I would recommend before jumping into any of this code and testing any of this out to read through these guides. Super helpful in getting an understanding of what's going on here. Right here we see the objects of a tab bar interface and you'll see that it is called a UI tab bar controller and within that UI tab bar controller we have an array of view controllers. So we're already familiar with view controllers and we, we have the main view controller, we have the second view controller. And so what we want to do is we just want to navigate between those two on that tab bar. And I might go ahead and create some other view controllers that we could work with. But just for example sake, we're just going to use those at first and then we'll see how it goes. So if I jump back into that documentation, uh, you'll see even more. We have like a diagram here, tab bar controller with the view controllers that are in an array. And then you can have different types of, of, of view controllers, basically. And you'll see that there's different icons here. Now, from what I've read through the documentation, you can actually customize these icons and put your own images in there. But for this example, we're going to use what's what's um, what's there and what's provided by the system. So let's let's jump into it. And as you can see, I'm using a different um, code editor here. And this is my RubyMine code editor, code IDE. And I use this for Ruby development. I love this editor. Previously, I was using Sublime Text, Sublime Text 2, and my uh, iTerm as my terminal. But this IDE has it all. So it has my terminal, it has my code editing, and it has some auto completion that I, I really enjoy. So I'm just going to jump from, from, sublime text into this and I'll try to explain what's going on here um, in case you're not familiar with Ruby mine. So right here I've got my version control and I'm, I'm using get to manage my version version control system and if you want to look at uh, Ruby mine you can go to jetbrains.com and go to IDEs Ruby mine and you can learn more about that there. But let's let's go ahead and let's dig in. So we want to go ahead and add that tab bar controller. Let's look up in our documentation what a UI tab bar controller is. So since this is a controller, I want to try to keep my controllers in the controllers area. And this is a tab bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new directory for my tab bars. And I'm going to place a main tab bar controller in there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this class so it's main oops main tab bar controller I'm going to have it inherit from that UI tab bar controller just like uh, main view controller inherits from the UI view controller we're going to try to do the same thing here and then we'll go ahead and we'll save this as is. Now I want, I want, let's see that to show up when I get to my second screen. So let, let me fire up the simulator here. And in, in Ruby mine, you can either click on this little play button here, or you can you can use your, your keyboard and just type control R at the same time. It'll fire up the, I guess the runner and it'll go ahead and load everything, build everything just like you would if you use the rate command. So this is just a quick shortcut and it's going to fire up my simulator. And what I want to do is I want to add that tab bar to my second view. So we're going to add it down here at the bottom. So what I want to do is is I want to pass that second view into my tab controller. So your UI tab controller needs an array of views. And I believe the, the controller at index zero corresponds to the leftmost tab. And I believe if I read it correctly somewhere that the first one at that index zero is going to be the one that shows up first. 
So what I'll do is now that I've created this, I will go into my main view controller. And I don't know if you remember, we set up an action here that allows you to go to the second view controller. So what we need to do is we need to wrap that second view controller in that, that um, uh, main tab bar uh, controller. So we need to wrap that together. So we'll go down to our action here and you'll see that second controller action that we set up. And what we need to do, I believe, is replace this second view controller. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to place a tab bar method in there. So tab bar and I'm going to call upon our main tab bar controller here. That new and then that should pass it through so it should it should return that that bar and it, we could probably just pass that into there so main tab bar controller dot new and let's try to skip that and see what happens so we'll do that and in our main tab bar controller let's set up some initiation here or let's just like that that UI view controller or the UI views, I'm I'm putting it in the init. So as soon as that is initialized, it should run this. So what we want is self dot view controllers. And I'm gonna put that second view controller in there. And then let's see what happens. So I'm gonna rerun, rerun that. And let's see what builds in our our application. Awesome! So we have a nav bar here, and it says second. I believe it says second because that is the title of the the second view controller. And so what we can do now, I want an icon to show up there. Actually, I want an icon there. So let's see how we do that. Um, UI tab bar, see icon, uh, UI tab bar item, UI tab by item. Okay, so we can initialize an item. And this is, okay, so item, I believe. I believe that since we're going to be adding this to our controllers and we're going to be navigating through controllers that we might put the uh, UI tab bar item on the controller itself. Um, let's see, UI tab bar controller. And if we go back to those guides, actually, let's just try it. Let's try putting it in there. So UI. UI view and same thing here to make sure that when that class is first initialized, so when we first in, uh, first initialize it here, uh, we want something to show up. So self and let's do a self dot tab bar item equals what is that? A UI tab bar item and we're going to init with tab bar system item. So this is going to allow us to use uh, the systems icon. So init with tab bar system item. I wonder if RubyMind has, doesn't have the auto completion for that. Okay, no problem. So this is going to contain the system item and a tag. So the system item you can choose from that UI system items enum. And so here's what we can see what we're going to get. So let's use, let's use the favorites. So we'll do favorites for the second controller. And then we need to pass in a tag. And since this will be the first one on the list, I'm going to tag it as the, uh, number one. So that'll be my integer for this one. Let's see what happens. I'm going to rerun this in the simulator and see if this works. 
Okay, so it's shutting down the previous simulator and running it again. Okay, that crashed on us. Let's see. Let's see what happened. Ah, so I've seen this before. Undefined method init with tab bar. It's because I'm trying to call init directly on on that class. So I forgot to allocate some memory to that. Let's try that again. Rerun it and see what happens. Had to do. Oh, sweet. We got the star, but we have favorites on there. And let's see. I think that just comes standard with it. So maybe we can change that at a different time. Um, we got bookmarks. I wonder if it does the same thing if we do bookmarks. So we'll go ahead and use that, save it, rerun it, and then we'll see what happens. Had to do, yeah, it says the same thing with bookmarks. We might be able to change it with init with title. I believe I saw that init with title and image. And I believe you've, you, you know, you give your own image here instead of, of using a system image. So I'll just leave this as is and we'll just, we'll experiment with what we have here. So what we're going to do is now that this has been added, and let's take a look at that again. Okay, so that's working great. Let's add in the main main view controller. So we're gonna create a new one there. And let's save that, fire it up again, and see if it's gonna give us that option to go to the main view controller. So add to do. Ah, it's there. So you can see down here we have the title for it. So it's main and bookmark. We don't have an icon there because we haven't set one up yet. So let's go into the main view controller and I'm just gonna copy this. Copy and go to the top. I paste that right before my view did load and give this a tag of two. And then what we'll do is we'll change that from bookmarks to another option here. So let's use this recent one. Okay, and rerun that. So we saved it, now we'll rerun it, and then we'll see if it gives us an icon. Add to do. Okay, we got the bookmarks and recents icon. Okay, great, so that's gonna allow us to just kinda navigate between the two view controllers there. And you'll notice that we can still go back to the main view controller and that's provided courtesy of the navigation bar controller that we had earlier that we created within the app delegate so we have that UI navigation controller and so now this is a different controller that's that's wrapping the second view controller and the main view controller now I, I saw earlier reading through the documentation that if you have more than four view controllers in this array that it'll Play, it'll paste, or not paste, it'll put a little more icon to this right hand side. So just to test that out, let's go ahead and put six in there. Make sure that we add the commas correctly. We'll save it, run it again, and we'll see what happens there. Okay, so add to do, and we got the bookmarks, recents, bookmarks, recents, and more. And that more brings up like a table view where you could go to bookmarks or basically switching to the other view. So that's useful if you have uh, a lot more options that you want to provide the user, and you just pay or you just put the first four major ones. And what we can do is it allow them to navigate to those as well. So Looks, looks like if you click on main, it takes you back to that main controller. So that's pretty great. That allows us to add in our, um, our, our tab bar items. And I think you can customize this a little bit more. So if we go to UI tab bar controller, and we just put that in there. This tab bar uh, is read only. Now you shouldn't do this, but this is just to kind of show you. So it says that you shouldn't, uh, you should never attempt to manipulate it, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it anyways. 
So I'm going to take self dot tab bar and I'm going to set the self dot tab bar. What can we do with the tab bar? Tab bar. Uh, what can we do with that? Well, we can change the bar tint color. So let's change that bar tint color to a UI color of red color. And let's save that and see what happens there. I believe that should still change it even though it's supposed to be read only. But you can you can actually go ahead and customize this even more. So add to do and you can customize. You see it's red now. It's not pretty but just to show you an example of what you can do. So I'm just gonna remove that. And I'm going to save this. And that's pretty much it for this video. We'll see about customizing this tab bar a little more in the future and uh, see how iOS does want us to do it. So uh, I'll see you in the next video.